hey guys welcome and welcome back to this youtube channel if you're new here my name is anruka i usually do nursing content health talk and uh, vlog so if you have not subscribed kindly please subscribe let's let's reach 1000 subscribers and if uh, you are a returning subscriber thank you very much for always clicking in let's um, stay tuned continue watching the video up to the end so that you will get more information anything you want me to talk about let me know in the comment section so guys today we want to talk about polio poliomyelitis poliomyelitis is a uh, is, is a disease caused by polio virus it causes mild and no symptoms in most people but uh, in some people it can cause paralysis and death so uh, there are three variation of polio virus called wild polio virus type 1, 2, and 3. Wild polio uh, uh, type 2 and 3 have been eradicated and it's no longer exist. And wild polio type, uh, type 1 only exists in few parts of the world. So polio type 1 is most likely to cause paralysis. Um, polio is the name of the disease caused by polio virus and yes there are still cases of polio in some parts of the world while the number of people affected has been greatly reduced international effort to eradicate polio is still going so what are the types of polio polio can affect uh, your body differently depending on where the virus multiply and attack so we have types of polio which include abortive poliomyelitis, non-paralytic poliomyelitis, paralytic poliomyelitis, na polio encephalitis, and then we have post-polio syndrome. So we are going to define them so that you know what we are talking about. So abortive poliomyelitis cause flu-like and intestinal symptoms. And then it only lasts a few days and does not cause long-lasting issues. Non-paralytic poliomyelitis may cause aseptic meningitis, a swelling of the area around your brain. It causes more symptoms than abortive poliomyelitis and may require you to stay in the hospital. Paralytic poliomyelitis happen when poliovirus attack your brain and spinal cord. It can paralyze the muscle that allow you to breathe, speak, swallow, and move your limbs. Depending on what parts of your body are affected, it is called spinal polio or bulbar polio. Spinal and bulbar polio can appear together. So bulbar spinal polio, uh, that is how it can be named sometimes. So less than 1% of people with uh, polio get paralytic uh, poliomyelitis. And then we also have a polio encephalitis. It is a rare type of polio that mostly affect infant. It is causing swelling on the brain. And then we have post polio syndrome is when symptoms of polio come back years after a polio infection. So how does polio affect your body? Polio virus get into your body through your mouth or nose. It makes more copies of itself uh, or it reproduces in your throat and the gut, that is the intestine. In some cases, it gets in your, into your brain and spinal cord and causes paralysis. Paralysis can affect your arms your legs and the muscles that control the breathing so you see how polio is dangerous so who is at risk of getting polio you are most at risk for polio if you are not vaccinated and uh, also if you live in in or travel to area where polio hasn't been eliminated we know those parts of the of the country in kenya we know them we have some part of the country where polio is not eliminated at like Machakos, Nairobi, Garissa, yeah? Uh, and also, 
Uh, you are also at risk if you live uh, or travel to area with poor sanitation. And also if you are under five and pregnant mother are also at risk. And also like uh, another type of group of people, those who are having low immunity, their body cannot fight any infection. So can adult get polio? I had this question being asked uh, on TV. So yes, adult can get polio. Many adults have immunity either because they are vaccinated or they have had polio. Adults who ha are not vaccinated can get polio if they are exposed to the virus. So how common is polio? Symptomatic polio is rare in many parts of the world or in many parts of the um, country thanks to the World Wide Vaccination Program because they are trying to eliminate it each and every day. And remember, if you only get, if we get one person, that is also, uh, that is an outbreak. So we have to vaccinate uh, the area which this polio has been found. In most countries, polio is considered eliminated. It is no longer spreading in that area. But when people stop getting vaccinated, polio can start to spread again. Yeah? Uh, is polio eradicated? Well, polio type 2 and 3 are globally eradicated. They are no longer existing in this part of the, of the world. That means there are not any natural occurring cases anymore in the face of the world. But uh, polio virus type 1 has been eliminated in, in most countries but not eradicated worldwide. That is why most of the time in Kenya we usually have vaccination going on of polio or polio campaign. So um, eliminated means a disease is no longer spreading in that area or it does not exist. So there can still sometimes be Mm, cases and outbreak usually from international travel. Okay, when was the polio uh, recorded cases of um, when was the last recorded cases of polio in US? So last case of natural occurring polio in US was in 1979. So cases since then have either been contracted outside of US or have been from the live polio vaccine which is no longer given in U.S., but the last cases of vaccines drive polio in the U.S. was reported in 2022. So, symptoms and cases, or, okay, symptoms and causes, what are the symptoms of polio? Between 70% and 95% of people infected with polio virus doesn't have symptoms. Of most of, 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 of these, of, I mean, of those with symptoms, most people have the mildest form while flu-like and international symptoms. Paralytic polio cases causes the most uh, uh, serious symptoms, including the paralysis. So symptoms of abortive poliomyelitis are similar with other illness. They start three to seven days after getting infected and last a few days. So we have the fever, we have the fatigue, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation, also throat. Symptoms of non-paralytic. Non-paralytic start with the same symptoms as abortive polymyelitis. Additional symptoms start with a few days in the including neck shave, stiffness, neck stiffness, pain or pain, pains, and the middle feeling in your arms and legs, severe headache, sensitive to light, that is photophobia. And then uh, paralytic polyomyelitis have sensitive to touch and muscle spasm. In addition, in addition um, uh, spinal paralytics make it so uh, you, can, you can't move your arms and uh, your legs and therefore you are paralyzed. Valve perimilotic makes it a uh, makes it hard to breathe, swallow and speak. And verbal uh, spinal paralytic or polymyelitis has symptoms of both spinal and bulb uh, symptom. So symptoms of encephalitis polio or polyencephalitis you can have symptoms of a polyencephalitis on their own or along with the flu-like symptoms and they include in extreme tiredness, fatigue, 
anxiety, trouble, unfocusing, seizures. Uh, we have seen that polio is caused by poliovirus. And how does it spread? Now, polio spread through coughing and sneezing or from coming in contact with the poop or feces of an infected person. And polio is fecal odor trans transmitted disease. It can spread by not washing your hands after using the bathroom or touching poops like changing diapers, drinking contaminated water or getting into your mouth, eating food that have touched contaminated water, swimming in contaminated water, and when someone who has a diarrhea swim in it, coughing or sneezing, being in close contact with someone with polio, touching contaminated surfaces, that is how polio can be contracted. Is polio contagious? Yes, polio is highly contagious. It can spread easily from one person to the other. How do people diagnose polio? Well, a healthcare provider diagnoses polio by performing physical exam. In most of the diagnoses, we usually do physical exam and just checking, testing samples of body fluids and asking you about your symptoms. It is important to let your provider know if you are travel if you have traveled anywhere recently. Your provider may take samples of body fluid to look for signs of polio or other infection, including saliva from your throat, poop or stool, blood, and or cerebrospinal fluid. Because polio symptoms look like a flu symptoms, your provider may do other tests to rule out more common condition. Management, how does it uh, be managed or how can your healthcare provider manage polio? So there are no specific medication to treat polio. If you have paralytic polio, you will receive physical therapy. If your breathing muscles are weakened or paralyzed, you will need mechanical ventilation, a machine that helps you breathe. You might be able to improve your symptoms by drinking fluids such as water, juice, and bro uh, broth, using heat pads to help muscle ache, taking pain relievers such as brofen, uh, doing physical therapy, and any exercise recommended by your healthcare provider, getting plenty of rest. If is there any a cure for polio? No, there is no cure for polio. There is not any way to make it go away faster or prevent paralysis. But how can we prevent polio? Mm -hmm. The best way to prevent polio is to, to get vaccinated. So vaccination is usually done in chil chil children under five. If you don't get vaccinated as a child or don't know if you did, ask your healthcare provider if you should get vaccinated. So recommended polio vaccination schedule, healthcare officials recommend for four polio shoot in childhood. First shoot at 12, uh, at 12 months, but that one does not apply here in Kenya. In Kenya, we got a zero dose, six weeks, 10 weeks, and uh, 14 weeks. Yeah, that is in Kenya for children under five years yeah so polio is being vaccinated with live antenated uh, vaccine or it can be killed so i think that uh, those are the most important thing that i can say about polio if you have anything you want to talk about you can comment in there comment section remember if you have polio in if you have ever contracted polio you can also still contact the disease in future if you're not treat, if you were not treated well or if you did not get the vaccination if you if you are from someone if you get contact with someone who is having the disease or if you, because polio is fecal oral, you can also contract it that way. So I think I will stop from there. Let's meet in the next video. Bye till next time.